Welcome to Africa, where the animals feel the hot rubber going down their spines while there's a civil war on the landscape of the continent. Right off the bat, we get the Soul 2008 on the rails ride where the only thing you can do is look around. This was very big back in 2007 to 2010. Multiple games done this after Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. But it makes sense, Call of Duty's a trend starter. Maybe not so much today, but back in the day, it's been a huge trend starter. While taking a lovely taxi ride, you really do get to see the beauty of the African landscape. And why aren't more games taking place in Africa? It's a unique setting for a game, and this game shows it off very well. While this is an open world Far Cry game, most Far Cry games are, but this one's the first game in the series to be open world. The map is mostly linear, trails that go around the whole map. There are parts where you can cross over to another trail, but a good portion of the map is cut off and you'll most likely stick to the trail. It's not the worst map I've ever played in, but for its time it was really good and even today's standards I prefer it over a lot of open world games. Buses are the fast travel tool. On every corner of the map, there's a bus stop, and there's one in the center of the map, where the main missions are picked up from. I didn't like this way of fast travel, but it does let you see most of the landscape of this game, which is pretty from its deserts to its unique rainforests. It's time to move past the beauty of the landscape and talk about the ugly civil war between UFLL and APR. The APR is made up of foreigners from other African countries who want to unify Africa as one. The UFLL are natives to a country that want to be independent and restore the glory days of the country. No matter what their ideologies are, the only thing that these two factions want is power, diamonds, and oppressing the citizens in the region. We do have someone who is fueling the conflict, and that's a notorious armed deal named the Jackal. The Jackal is a mysterious armed dealer who has been selling guns and bullets in the region at such a high rate that every gun and bullet could be traced back to him. The Jackal is a mysterious character. While in the game he has served in the US Navy during the Cold War, the character's text profile name is Jack Carver. Well you might think, oh that's his real name. Well maybe, but the first Far Cry game the main protagonist is named Jack Carver. And Far Cry 1 takes place in 2025, and Far Cry 2 takes place in 2008. You see the problem here, it doesn't help that they look similar. My theory is that this game was intended to be a direct sequel, but changed during production. But there's actually more issues. The Jackal is actually supposed to be Jack Carver from the original Far Cry. Because Jack Carver in the original Far Cry was this kind of shifty, like, smuggler, gun runner kind of crook who ends up kind of landing on this island with this island of Dr. Moreau like craziness going on. And the idea was like this is just him like 10 years later or something after after he's seen whatever he saw on this island. But the idea is, you know, a decade later, here he is kind of leveled up his 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 smuggling game and he's gotten embroiled in this conflict, but he's also been through a lot more and he's seen a lot of messed up stuff. I'll be cursing my name when the blood is spreading out of their necks. And you're not gonna stop me. You think I don't know you, what you're about, what you came here to do? Wake up. I used to be you. That was Clint Hawking, Far Cry 2's creative director, confirming fan theories that these two characters are the same person. It's what you believe in, and if you want to believe that these two characters are the same, go ahead. But if you don't, then don't. It does shine more character development if you do think both the characters are the same. How do I know I can trust you? Before your adventure starts, you get around 9 playable characters you can choose from. It doesn't really matter who you pick, they don't add anything to the gameplay. After your lovely cab ride, your character blacks out due to a sparkle of malaria, which you get a lot of malaria moments in this game. Malaria is a gameplay feature. You get these headache trauma signs. Kinda, I don't know, I'm not a doctor. But when it happens, you need to take medicine. And you do run out of medicine. There's an underground quest line, which after each mission, they supply you with some malaria medicine. The further you go, the less the medicine works, which forces you to go more into the underground missions. After you wake up, you see the jackal. 
This is the first time the main character in the Jackal meets, but another trend that started with this game is the CIA. The main character is tasked by the CIA to assassinate the Jackal. In the series, the CIA has a small role, and a small mysterious story arc. Far Cry 2 is a great step away from Crytek's original Far Cry game. Far Cry 2 really went out there with ambitions and came back with something amazing. It's pretty sad that people don't ever talk about Far Cry 2. The series hasn't changed much throughout every installment. Even Far Cry 2 is the start of what Ubisoft games would be today. With their whole compound liberation feature, while all Ubisoft games have these days, even the healing system has been the same. If you don't have medicine or your health is low, it'll give you a random animation of healing that's based off what's happening to your player. So if he's on fire, you'll get this animation. And if you're getting shot, this animation will happen. All Far Cry games have something like this after the second game. So it's going to Outposts and Safe Houses. While they aren't well indicated as the sequels, Outposts don't get cleared out, but scouted so the enemies always return, which is a hassle. When at every intersection you have enemies shooting at you, which doesn't help. Add more insult to injury, they spawn back once you get to a certain distance away from them but the distance is super short. It's about 5 seconds of distance with a car, so it's super short. Another downside about these outposts are that the only way to have these outposts scouted is once you find the stash, so which could be ammo or health. You can mindlessly walk around and can't find the stash in some instances, which isn't fun. To be honest, there is no point in scouting outposts at all. There is no reward for it at all. Now clearing safe houses is better, kind of. Well, it has the same concept, but the enemies don't come back once you take over it. But, it still doesn't do much. The safe houses are not that big of a deal. You can stash your weapons or pick them up if you buy the crates. And, you can sleep in the safe houses, which can change the time of the day. But, if you want to use your buddies, then you have to go to the safe house. Far Cry 2 has a system that the other games in the series don't. And it's the buddy system. These NPCs are characters that you haven't chosen to play as. So the rest of these characters you haven't chosen will become your buddies, where they will give you alternative missions while you play the main mission and it does give you a different playthrough if you replay the game. The buddies don't just give you alternative missions, they also help you if you lose all of your health. One of your buddies will come and drag you out of combat so you can heal yourself without loading an old save, but if your buddies save you then you need to go to the safe house to have them be ready and help your ass once you go down again. With how impressive the AI is for this game for its time, the buddies can help you a lot because it's not fun when you're doing an hour of progress all over again. That's why when I play this and my buddies save my ass, I head to the safe house to get them ready for the next time my ass goes down. So I've mentioned the AI, so I need to talk about them now. The AI does try to force you out of cover. They will try to flank you and come at you from different angles. They are pretty impressive for their time. Another game that reminds me of this type of AI system is Rainbow Six Vegas. The combat's pretty well done, but the one thing in Far Cry 2 that really hurts is the clunky sprint during combat. When you're doing something, for example shooting or loading, once you're done the animation, the character won't sprint. It's weird that the sprint only works after a few seconds of the animation finishing. That's my only problem with combat besides the lackluster stealth mechanics, which I won't get into the stealth mechanics because it's very basic and there's an option to get a stealth suit in the game which does help but still poorly done. But Far Cry 2 has some really good AI that gives enjoyment into the combat. Ubisoft have made their own engine for Far Cry 2 which is based off the Cry engine. You can tell because of the beautiful visuals when I first played this game back in the day on PS3 it was the best looking game and had amazing fire effects. Here are some examples of the fire. Fire spreads like I've never seen in a game before, even for today's standards. The fire is beautiful in this game, even now it looks great. So let's get into the weapons gunplay where this game is okay with nothing really amazing and nothing that sucks. But the cool thing is that the weapons have durability. So using the same gun over time you'll see the gun start to have scratches then turning more rusty. 
Well, it starts jamming, you need to keep hitting the reload button to clear the jam, and eventually you're gonna blow up. And the animation for this is really well done. The whole weapon durability feature is so well done, and only a handful of games use this. Another game that does this very well is Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. With how well the AI attacks you, it brings in some more challenges to the table with this feature and makes combat more interesting. The only way to know how bad the condition your gun is in, if it's all rusty and jams so often, then it's time to replace it or you could be in combat and bam, there goes your gun. I enjoy this feature and it helps with the atmosphere of this game what's trying to push. Now why can't we have the durability features in all the Far Cry games? Maybe one day we could, but so far Ubisoft is too scared to advance in game development. Which is weird because this game is very ambitious. Well Ubisoft isn't what they used to be. While we have gun durability, there's another durability feature that is vehicle durability. Once your vehicle starts to smoke, you can repair it and it does help a lot if you drive by a post and they attack you for the hundredth time. There's something that's weird that came to me. This game came out in 2008 and Ghost Recon Wildlands came out in 2017, almost 10 years apart and why is the driving in this game 10 times better than Wildlands driving? But the driving in this game isn't the greatest. Every car has the same speed it seems and they all drive the same. There's no difference between all the vehicles but there is one difference and that's the vehicle with the turrets on them. While driving you can slide into the turret by a single click of a button which is handy. That's the only difference between the vehicles and that's a shame. So most of the time you'll be using a vehicle where you can shoot from. There isn't much to driving at all, it's straightforward. I put a lot of time driving in this game and it's not that great, but I have been driving throughout this African country and I eventually flipped the car over. Well I think someone worked on this game played a lot of Halo because you can flip your car back onto its wheels and it's very similar done in the same way as Halo Combat Evolved. It's a nice touch they added in this game because the lack of fast travel would hurt this game if you couldn't flip your car back over. I know there isn't much that can lift your car on its back but walking to your destination isn't fun in these open world games and we all have done it a few times here and there. Going back and playing this really feels good and that's not the nostalgia playing in the back of my head. I do think this is a great game if you ask me. Would I play this game in the future I would say yes. And I think people should talk more about this game because it seems like it's the most ambitious Far Cry game, maybe the most ambitious Ubisoft game in a while. If you can hear me now then you probably watched the whole entire video and thank you for watching the whole entire video. I know my videos are not the greatest, this one kind of sucks, the last two sucked as well but thank you for watching. And I've been trying to make these videos much better. I know they've been really bad, but hopefully I'll get much better soon.